hey, did you know that if you're not part of the solution, that's right, you're part of the precipitate. So let's get to it. Are you in the solution or are you in the precipitate? Anyway, solutions, that's the focus of our lesson today. Just to review what we learned in class, an electrolyte is a solution made up of an ionic compound that is soluble in water. And when the electrolyte dissolves in water, it forms positive ions and negative ions. And those free-flowing ions can conduct electricity, as you saw in class. The light bulb went on. A non-electrolyte is a molecular compound that can dissolve in water, but does not conduct electricity in solution. So therefore, with our conductivity tester, no light bulb. Um, because it does not form any free-flowing ions. It stays together as a complete molecule, like the sugar water. Now, turning our attention to concentration, we know, need to know the parts of a solution. The solute is the uh, substance that you're dissolving into solution, while the solvent is the stuff that's usually being dissolved. And concentration, we're going to use the... Um, unit molarity for concentration, which is a capital M. Uh, there are other concentration units, all of which exist as a ratio of solute to solvent. Molarity, we're going to use moles of solute divided by liters of solution. So now I'm going to show you how to use the molarity equation to solve for the concentration of a solution. So if you look at question number one, we already have some information here. We know the mass of the solute, and we know the volume of the solution in liters. Isn't that nice? Um, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to set up a simple um, equation to figure out the molarity. And uh, our equation is M double equals control question mark N over V. So I need to define my variables. Well, n is equal to the number of moles. Well, we don't have moles, we have grams. So here's where our mole application comes in. We have to change from grams to moles. So for every one mole of barium chloride, well, we need to know the, the formula mass of barium chloride. So let's go to P table and look it up. 7.2.3. Hundred and thirty-seven point three for barium. Chlorine is uh, thirty-five point five, I believe. Let's go back here. Yep, thirty-five point four five. Um, <clears throat> two times thirty-five point four five. And now we have the molar mass of barium chloride. Okay, so we can use that. Two hundred and eight point two grams. Okay. So that's our first variable. Now we're going to define V, the volume of the solution, is 2.75 liters. Isn't that nice? Okay, and so now we can simply solve. M equals N over V. Solve with a capital S, and we'll put a question mark, capital M. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't insert. Notice my variables are still blue. I need to do a shift return to input my variables. There we go. So here's our answer. 0 0.255 moles per liter. We know that it's molarity because it's moles per liter. Now, that's the concentration of the solution. But what about the concentration of the ions? We have barium ions in solution and chlorine ions in solution. And what makes this an electrolyte is that those ions split apart and they're free-flowing in the solution. All right. Well, let's think about this for a minute. Barium chloride, when it completely dissociates into ions, we're going to get one barium ion and two chlorine ions. <clears throat> That's what the little subscript 2 tells us. So if the solution produces one barium ion per formula unit, then the molarity of the solution is equal to the molarity of the barium ions. Because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, <clears throat> in the, that is not the case for the chlorine. Because there are two, uh, two Cl ions 
for every one formula unit. So what happens is the formula, the, the concentration of the chlorine ions is twice the concentration of the original solution. So um, So it's two times the uh, concentration all right so if we take the concentration which is 0 0.255 and we multiply it by 2 that tells us that the concentration of the chlorine ions is 0.51 molar the last question is what's the total ion concentration well we have three ions for every one formula unit. So we can answer this two ways. We can total up the, the individual ion concentrations, or we can multiply the concentration of the original solution by three. Because for every one barium chloride formula unit, we get three ions. So the molarity, the concentration of all the ions in solution is equal to three times the concentration of the original solution. All right, so if we do 0 0.255 times three, that's the concentration of the entire solution, of the all the ions in solution. All right, let's just do one more problem uh, using the molarity equation, and then I'll let you try the others on your own. Okay, so the next question here we know that we, the, the volume of the solution and we know the concentration and this time we're going to try to solve for grams again we're going to use our molarity equation um, but this time we're going to actually solve for the number of moles first and then do moles to grams as our final step so we know that in this case we know that the molarity is equal to 1.50 um, and we also know that the volume is equal to 0 0.750 liters, um, oh, units. So the molarity units, we're going to, to make the units cancel out, we have to actually put it in as moles per liter. Otherwise, we'll get something weird. Okay, and now if we solve for molar for n we should get the number of moles oops i need to clear my variables first all right let's try this again there we go so what we've learned is that the solution contains 1.125 moles of potassium chloride. We're not quite to our final answer because we actually want the answer to be in grams. So we're going to do a simple mole conversion problem. So if we have moles and control question mark, well, we need to look up the chemical, the uh, atomic mass of potassium, 39.1, and chlorine is 35.5. I like to do it in a separate line, but you can put it right into the calculation if you prefer. So that's our molar mass. So for every 74.6 grams of potassium chloride, we know that is equal to one mole. And voila, our final answer. Well, let's get in, let's round it to correct significant digits. Why not? Our original problem has three and three, so our answer should be three. 83.9 grams of potassium chloride is needed to make your solution. So you can see that the molarity equation has three parts, the molarity, the moles, and the volume. So you just use it as needed. Um, usually there's either a mole conversion at the beginning of the problem or at the end of the problem, depending on what you're starting with. Give it a try.